So, good morning everyone. Today, Dr. Sara will talk to us about a very, very important topic in our daily practice, that is headache in acute emergency. And this is something we all face and deal with every day. So, we need to pay good attention. Good morning everyone. Uh, we will talk about uh, acute headache in emergency setting. Uh, we will concentrate about uh, the headache that is uh, not traumatic cause of uh, headache, not the traumatic cause, we will exclude it. We will talk about only the, uh, the non traumatic cause of acute headache that present in an emergency department. Uh, the headache, as you know, is a common symptom and it is uh, account about 2% uh, of the cases that uh, present in emergency department. and. Uh, we will uh, talk in this uh, seminar, we will concentrate about the review, the etiology of acute headache in the emergency department and uh, also classify the abnormality according to the predominant imaging manifestation. Uh, we, will, uh, uh, we will put it in three um, uh, categories uh, according, uh, the, according to the etiology, hemorrhage or vascular abnormality or edema and mass effect. And there are some mesonomous uh, conditions. We will talk about it later at the end. Uh, first, we will talk about hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is the uh, most common and the most uh, serious uh, uh, etiology of acute headache in emergency department. According to the localization of the hemorrhage, this slide is uh, uh, just a, sum a summary, and we will talk about uh, each uh, one of these uh, conditions later. Uh, but uh, in this, by localization, just for memorization, the subarachnoid hemorrhage, we will, uh, the most common cause of subarachnoid hemorrhage is uh, aneurysm. And uh, uh, the most common uh, uh, site is uh, subarachnoid space, as we know. Uh, and uh, uh, in the basal ganglia, we, we have hypertensive cause of, uh, uh, of uh, intracranial hemorrhage, which is the most common cause of basal ganglia hemorrhage. And uh, the lower, the lower uh, distribution of uh, hemorrhage, we have the uh, cerebral amyloid angiopathy is the most common cause, and also infarct, uh, venous infarct, tumor, and vascular malformation. All these uh, causes will cause uh, intracranial hemorrhage, lower distribution of intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, as a differential diagnosis, we have, uh, as we mentioned, intra intraparenchymal hemorrhage and subarachnoid hemorrhage. The intraparenchymal, as we said, we have uh, the hypertensive uh, cause, uh, which is the most common uh, cause uh, of intracranial hemorrhage, in, uh, especially in elder men. And uh, the most common site is uh, basal ganglia pons cerebellum. And uh, the, the lower hematoma, we, as we said, we have the uh, uh, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, venous infarct, vascular malformation, tumor, uh, hemorrhagic metastasis, and hypertension. And also the uh, subarachnoidal uh, type, we said 80% it's uh, from ruptured berry aneurysm. And uh, also the 10% uh, 10 it is from non aneurysm peri mesencephalic uh, cause. We will discuss this, uh, all of this. Uh, later and uh, the less common causes of subarachnoid hemorrhage is AV malformation, drug abuse co uh, like cocaine, uh, press, uh, posterior reversal um, encephalopathy syndrome, and the uh, intracranial dissection. First, we will, t uh, as we said, we will uh, discuss the hemorrhagic causes. Uh, first of all, subarachnoid hemorrhage. The subarachnoid hemorrhage, the most common cause of uh, the most common cause of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is trauma. But the non-traumatic, the most common cause of non-traumatic uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage is uh, a, a ruptured berry aneurysm, which account around 85% uh, of the uh, uh, subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage uh, in emergency department. And uh, as we say here, these are uh, a CT scan, axial uh, CT scan, which shows the uh, hyper uh, hyper uh, dense uh, uh, signal in the subarachnoid space. So, she, she will point actually. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this is the uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, we have, uh, it is a 64 years old woman who presented with thunderclap headache. 
the initial uh, axial uh, CT, we have the subarachnoid hemorrhage the, in the basal cystin. The basal cystin is the most common site of intracranial uh, of uh, subarachnoid uh, hemorrhage, uh, which is shown here. This is it, the basal cystin. Uh, and uh, also, uh, in this uh, uh, um, MRA, shows... CTA. Uh, CTA, sorry. Uh, shows uh, the aneurysmal uh, in the middle cerebral artery and uh, uh, in the uh, branch of uh, anterior cerebral artery. And... Anco, anterior communicating. Uh, anterior communicating, sorry. Anterior communicating, and this is the middle cerebral artery. And in this uh, one, uh, 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 this uh, MR image, it's non-enhanced, uh, will show the, this saccular uh, middle cerebral artery uh, aneurysm. Uh, and post contrast, this will show enhancement. Uh, but the, the, uh, the anter anterior uh, communicating artery uh, will uh, not show enhancement in this case. Uh, the enhancement pattern, uh, it's uh, known to be uh, and the um, uh, uh, rupture, ruptured or impending bleeding uh, uh, type of aneurysm will show enhancement. Not on, uh, all the uh, aneurysm show enhancement, only the ruptured one or the leaking one uh, show enhancement uh, on MRA. And uh, the second type, we have infected mycotic aneurysm. Infected mycotic aneurysm, it is, uh, uh, from its name, it's uh, post-infectious. Uh, it will uh, uh, show as a hypoattenuating hypo uh, lesion in the uh, uh, tempor uh, temporoparietal region. And um, uh, as uh, this, uh, the A uh, is the maximum uh, intensity projection image. And uh, uh, the... Uh, the, uh, it shows a ruptured uh, infected uh, mycotic uh, aneurysm and uh, it will uh, show uh, edema and mass effect around the lesion. Uh, and uh, also we have to mention that uh, infected uh, mycot uh, mycotic is uh, the mycotic is fungal infection, but also we can have uh, viral uh, from viral, bacterial, uh, and parasitic. All the type of meningitis, encephalitis will cause this uh, kind of aneurysm. It is possible to find it. And also we have this uh, here. The left M2 segment. Uh, um, have a hemorrhage noted here. Uh, the empty segment of a middle cerebral uh, artery that ruptured and you show a ruptured and you uh, We finished non uh, aneurysm uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. We said uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage from berries aneurysm accounts for about 85% uh, of the subarachnoid hemorrhage. The other 15%, uh, it is from non-aneurysmal non perimesencephalic subarachnoid hemorrhage. We have a, a particular uh, patient that no, no known cause will be uh, found on imaging. Uh, this will, uh, most two-thirds of these are related for, uh, uh, to perimesencephalic subarachnoid hemorrhage. Yeah, no, no source of bleeding can be found. Yeah, non-aneurysmal. Yeah, there is no aneurysm. So the imaging finding for aneurysm, uh, the MRA, CTA, will be negative in these cases. Uh, only we have subarachnoid hemorrhage, but no, no aneurysmal cause will be found. Uh, in this case, uh, we have acute subarachnoid hemorrhage in 44 years old women in history of alcoholic hepatitis elevated uh, and uh, uh, international normalized ratio who present with a headache uh, after, uh, after a fall uh, and non-enhanced CT will show uh, the subarachnoid hemorrhage in the uh, interpedicular system. Then a perimesencephalic, uh, uh, encepha uh, this uh, perimesencephalic uh, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage, uh, this, uh, this is the most common site for it, the interpedicular uh, peri Pedicular system is the most common site of uh, this type of uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage. We have we will ch change to an uh, intracerebral hemorrhage. With the spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage is the uh, result of small vascular disease, yani a microangiopathy, and it is, this include uh, atherosclerosis, 
لایو فایل لینوسس سربل امایلوید انجیوپاتی لا فلانال لایو فایل لینوسس از دیپوزیت اف ایزینوفیل ان دی وسلز سو ایت ویل کوز ثینینگ اف دی وسل ان رپچر اف دی وسل طبعا دی سمول آرتریولز اند وینیوز اند دی سربل امایلوید انجیوپاتی از وی نو ایت امایلوید دیپوزیشن ان دی ان دی میدل اند دی سمول وسلز فیزل سایل ان ویل کوز ثینینگ اند رپچر اند ویل کوز دی انتراکرینیل هیموریج Uh, the, as we said at the, in the first uh, slide, the hypertension is the most common cause of uh, non-traumatic uh, intracranial hemorrhage in elderly patients. The most common affected site, it is very important uh, to know that, to memorize this, it is in the basal ganglia, thalamus, for, uh, pons, and cerebellum. This uh, image shows the most common site of hypertensive uh, um, uh, intracranial hemorrhage sites, which is, this is the basal ganglia, the pons, uh, the, uh, uh, the thalamus, and the cerebellum. This is the common presentation of, we will face it uh, every day in uh, emergency department. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Cerebral amyloid angiopathy, it is the most, uh, it is the, a major cause of lower, lower type of hemorrhage uh, in elderly patients. The distribution tend to be uh, posterior uh, in the posterior cortical and occipital loop. This uh, occipital uh, loop. This is the common presentation of amyloid uh, angiopathy. It is lower distribution and uh, in the posterior occipital area. Uh, we we have another thing to do, which is called pile AVM uh, AV malformation, anterior venous malformation. It is uh, also another uh, major cause of uh, lower hemorrhage, but this one uh, it is uh, cortical subcortical area. Uh, it is involved. Uh, this uh, and it is in this case it is in the uh, front of, uh, frontal uh, part and uh, will uh, it is uh, as we know uh, as we see here there is a uh, area of vasogenic edema uh, around the lesion this is cytotoxic uh, cytotoxic sorry and with mass effect uh, for AV malformation we have a grading system which is called Stebsler step uh, Martin AV M uh, grading scale this uh, this scale is very important for the surgeons because uh, it, is it is ranging from one to five, uh, and uh, it is depending on, uh, de determine the size, the location, and the deep venous drainage of the AV uh, AVM. And according to the size, we, uh, we give the scoring. Uh, if the size of the, of the uh, AVM from zero to three, it is one, one score. And if it's 3.1 to 6, it's 2 score. And if it's more than 6, it is, uh, we give it 3 scores. And according to the location, we have uh, loca the location is uh, eloquent or non-eloquent. What is the meaning of eloquent? Eloquent means the vital area, yani the, uh, the AVM uh, uh, yani position, uh, if it's in the vital area or non-vital area. The eloquent locations, uh, 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 such as areas of sensory motor, language, visual, thalamus, hypothalamus, internal capsule, brain stem, cerebellar pedicle, uh, deep uh, cerebellar nuclei, these are vital, uh, vital sites, we, we call it eloquent. If it's uh, one of these, uh, the site, uh, the location of the AVM, if it's in one of these, we will give it one score. If it's not eloquent uh, area, we will give it zero. And the deep venous drainage, uh, if the deep uh, deep vents uh, included uh, in the, uh, in the uh, within the AVM, uh, we will give it one uh, one score, and if it's not, we will give it zero, and we will collect the uh, the scores. Uh, it is a total score for the surgeon is is one uh, to five. The five is the uh, uh, the worst prognosis. And the one, uh, of course, it's a better prognosis. And also, if, uh, if the score is six, it is not operable. Mm -hmm. yani, uh, we have to give this score, it's important. And uh, on MR, the AVM... This, uh, just one second. If the size is more than six, it's inoperable, not score. Because if mm -hmm. you go back, go back. Oh, you cannot have a score of six. 
حتى لو 3 4 5 اه اوكي ذا سايز اوكي ما ما يصير سكور 6 يعني there is no score 6 if the size is more than 6 okay that's the end of the problem okay not okay. the score okay on mr the avm uh, will show this cluster of signal void in t2 uh, uh, and it is called also nidus and the drainage bin uh, will be a, dra a drainage vessel will be uh, found this is the uh, classic MRI image uh, on T2 of uh, AV malformation. And also, uh, in this case, uh, this is just explanation. This is the NIDAS, it is called NIDAS, and this is the drainage uh, enlarged, uh, 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 enlarged tortuous uh, drainage vein. No, drainage artery, artery, sorry, supplying artery, 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 sorry. Artery. The vein yeah. is draining to the superficial part. This, one. Uh, this is the supplying artery, the, the, the middle meningeal, uh, middle cerebral artery supplying the uh, AVM, uh, as the, the vein was present here. This is the vein. Uh, we have AV, uh, uh, the AV malformation, it is the uh, abnormal connection between the artery and veins. And uh, this, the uh, it will f uh, form a thing like this. We discussed it and I guess. But uh, the AV fistula, it is uh, abnormal connection of the vessels with the superficial uh, meningeal uh, artery, uh, arteries and veins. So it is, uh, it is uh, found cortical, and uh, uh, it will uh, show. Uh, it will show it's uh, like uh, it, uh, this. The veins will be prominent, uh, hyper uh, echoic, uh, uh, sorry, hyper uh, dense, uh, and surrounding by if it's uh, surrounding by bleeding uh, spots. Uh, and uh, in the uh, veno, uh, yani, uh, this is CTA. Uh, will show this is pro a prominent uh, dilated, prominent uh, vessel uh, cortical ve uh, ve veins cortical. And uh, here uh, we show uh, this image shows that this is the. Uh, What's this example? CTA. This is conventional and geography. Conventional. Conventional. They call catheter and they put it in the artery and they inject contrast and you see this DSA digital subtraction. Digital subtraction and geography. And you can see that. Well, ectasia. Uh, this is the uh, tortuous dilated vein, venous okay. ectasia, with uh, this hypertrophied internal uh, maxillary. This is the ethmoid, ethmoid uh, vessels, and uh, this is uh, the uh, hypertrophied internal maxillary artery branch, which is uh, hypertrophied and tortuous. Uh, again, in the AV fistula, we have a classification. Uh, which uh, two we have two classification. One of them called Borden classification, and the other uh, one is Cognat classification. The Borden uh, classification it is one, two, three. Uh, يعني the one is venous drainage direct into dural sinuses uh, or the meningeal vein. The two is the, uh, venous drainage into dural uh, venous sinus with with a reflex. Uh, if there is a reflex, we give it two. If there is no reflex, we give it the number one. And the uh, three is for venous drainage direct into subarachnoid veins, uh, uh, or uh, if we have reflex only. The, co uh, uh, the Cognard uh, classification, it is the same, but it's uh, more with more details. It is from one to five. And uh, we consider the number one from Borden classification and the one and two A from the Cognars classification as a benign AV fistula, and the rest, the two and three from Borden and from two B two five uh, from uh, Cognard, it is a malignant AV fistula. Uh, we have uh, another entity which is spontaneous retroclival hematoma. Uh, this is uh, this is present this type of uh, retroclavian hematoma. Uh, it will uh, the patient will uh, uh, presented with uh, severe headache, which is uh, uh, which is um, uh, tender clubbing, and uh, it is uh, on imaging will show the retroclavian. Uh, um, uh, uh, it, it will show this bleeding retroclavian and anterior to the pontine. 
and uh, this is uh, the basoexpressive synchrodrosis. This is the co most common area for uh, this hemorrhage, and uh, it is very important that the bleeding site it is in uh, a non-dependent area. It is here because uh, the prepontine area have um, arachnoid space. Uh, this is um, the blood will be collected in this area, and we have two types. We have uh, epidural type and subdural type. The uh, epidural type is more common in elderly, uh, but uh, in general, the spontaneous retrocrival hematoma it's more common in, in children in a pediatric age group. But the epidural uh, type it's more co and most commonly seen in uh, in uh, elderly than uh, in adult age group than in, in, in children. Uh, and that's it. Now we will uh, talk about va the second part of our seminar, which is the vascular abnormalities. We have uh, reversible, cere uh, reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome. It is more than one, uh, one uh, disease, it's like a syndrome, but uh, the, the disturbance of cerebral vascular tone is the most common uh, scenario for the pathogenesis of this, uh, this uh, syndrome. And also it have another name uh, called Fleming syndrome, but it's not uh, used uh, widely, but uh, it has two names. And uh, the, reversa uh, the reversible uh, cerebral uh, vasoconstriction syndrome, it has an association and coexists with Press syndrome, posterior reversible uh, encephalop uh, encephalopathy. And uh, the type of uh, headache, uh, the, uh, the presentation of uh, this uh, reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome is uh, by tender club headache, which is maybe the only symptom, and it is present in around 75% of the patient. And uh, it is also uh, can be associated with other diseases like furochromocytoma, uh, porphyria, uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Uh, and we have uh, uh, another uh, entity which is primary angitis uh, of uh, cerebral venous system. This is uh, central, nervous system. Uh, central nervous system. Sorry, uh, this uh, this one, the, uh, this pank, it is the same. Have the same presentation of uh, reversible, uh, uh, reversible. Uh, sorry. Reversible uh, vasoconstriction syndrome, uh, but uh, we uh, it has an, uh, some uh, uh, some difference. This difference, the uh, the onset of headache is insidious, uh, not like the other one, uh, and uh, it is occurring on older men, and uh, it it show multifocal uh, infarct in ninety percent. And, but the hemorrhagic complication uh, and competent, uh, co uh, commitment with the uh, commitment with press, press is not seen in this uh, in primary angitis uh, uh, of nervous central so nervous see, system. You see infarcts, but you don't see, see hemorrhage. Hemorrhage, yes. Infarcts, uh, yes, infarct, ninety percent, but uh, hemorrhage and uh, association with the press yes. is not present commonly. Uh, this is uh, this is the uh, early, uh, this is how we see this uh, the reversible cerebral uh, nervous system uh, syndrome. This is area of subarachnoid hemorrhage. Uh, yes, subarachnoid hemorrhage on the convexity of the cerebrum. Uh, with enhancement of the uh, with this gyral uh, sulca and gyral enhancement, sulca enhancement. And uh, the the. Uh, the imaging finding in this the uh, MR uh, sorry in this uh, uh, MRA uh, we see this beading pattern. It is uh, a bilateral beading pattern. But the most important thing that this is a reversible disease. That it is uh, a transit. This vasoconstriction and uh, this beading pattern is transit. This this is the same image. Uh, the same patient, sorry, after three months, it's completely resolved and it is norm it, uh, it's shown normal, these, uh, the uh, vessels. Uh, now we will shift to posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome, the PRESS syndrome. PRESS syndrome, it is uh, widely known uh, with uh, 
pregnancy with pregnancy and its complication pre eclampsia eclampsia and uh, this is the hypertension and these things uh, it is uh, mo most commonly it is uh, parietal to occipital involvement and cortical subcortical it is subcortical uh, uh, and from its name it is posterior so it is from uh, posterior occipital parietal area it is uh, uh, in around 70 percent it is uh, this is the common presentation of it and it uh, it loves uh, the cortical subcortical area and uh, it has uh, restricted diffusion in uh, seen sometimes in uh, around 17 percent uh, of the patient, uh, we will sh uh, we will see restricted diffusion, and also uh, sometimes um, in around uh, 21 to 44 percent, we can uh, see a, a contrast enhancement also in press. Uh, cerebral venous thrombosis. Cerebral venous thrombosis. It is uh, also a common cause of uh, headache. And uh, it is uh, most commonly uh, seen in the superior sagittal sinus, and also in the uh, cortical veins, it's seen around 6%. It will uh, be uh, like this, uh, parenchymal hemorrhage, seen in, uh, 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 it will, yani the thrombosis will cause hemorrhage, uh, because uh, the thrombosis will cause uh, thinning of the vessel and uh, will cause bleeding. And uh, this is the uh, parenchymal hemorrhage presentation, uh, which is seen in around one third of the patient. Typically, it is cortical again, the uh, cortical uh, uh, distribution. Visual, it's bilateral, cortical, it's and non arterial distribution. distribution. No artery okay. can cause this type this. of bleeding. Okay. And it is bilateral. Uh, so, if you have the superior sagittal sinus is involved, it will cause frontal and parietal uh, involvement. And if it's the transverse sinus, it will cause temporal and occipital uh, involvement. This is uh, the CT venography. It is a very uh, good uh, tool uh, to uh, diagnose uh, this uh, condition. Uh, it will cause these. Uh, it is rapid and reliable. It is uh, show around 95% uh, sensitivity. And uh, it will uh, be this, the cortical veins will be... Uh, uh, you can see the following defect in the... Uh, and, uh, sorry, yes, yes, the superior sagittal sinus, sinus. yes. Uh, it will uh, cause a filling defect along the sinus that is affected. Ah, and uh, the ideal thing that we do, it is 40, uh, seven, uh, 45 second delay scan in the venography. This, uh, this 45 uh, second delay, it is very good to uh, uh, see this... Uh, Filling defect uh, be, be, because the other veins will be filled, and uh, this uh, the defect will be uh, obvious and uh, seen uh, properly. Uh, we will have carotid and vertebral artery dissection. Uh, the dissection. Um, uh, uh, we have uh, two uh, dissections that will cause headache in uh, in the central nervous system, either the vertebral or the internal carotid. Uh, in the um, internal carotid, uh, we, uh, we have, an, like in this case, it will show this uh, thinning uh, and uh, uh, this the hematoma around it, and uh, this is a thinning uh, of the vessel, which is uh, from mid, uh, mid, uh, por uh, proximate to mid uh, segment of the vessel. It is uh, shown like this in the angiography. This is a CTA. And also, uh, the vertebral artery will show uh, this. Let's compare this one with this one. Yeah. This is the normal side. This one is abnormal. Why? Yeah. Be, be, uh, there is a, this intimal flap uh, hematoma uh, in, in the wall of the vessel. This is vertebral artery dissection. Vertebral artery dissection. Uh, most common uh, imaging finding is stenosis caused by formation of subintimal hematoma. And also uh, here we can see this uh, the th uh, intimal thickening and uh, hematoma around it, and this uh, crescent uh, it is called crescent sign. Uh, this crescent sign around the vessel. Uh, now we will talk about uh, some causes of edema and mass effect that cause headache. We have the first uh, intracranial infection. 
intracranial infection uh, from uh, uh, from all the causes of meningitis, encephalitis, uh, all of them will present uh, from viral, um, uh, a bacterial, parasitic, all of them can present with uh, meningism and uh, a headache and uh, will cause, uh, and the cause is mad edema from the, the, the edema and mass effect will cause a uh, headache and which is tender clap uh, in uh, or origin and also the most common uh, yani the most important things that uh, whenever we have a tender clap headache with uh, with fever associated with fever uh, we we should think about uh, infection and uh, to, uh, in this case uh, this case is hiv uh, in hiv it is uh, one of the most common uh, causes of infection encephalitis is toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis will show this hypo uh, uh, hypoattenuating this uh, hypodense sorry uh, area uh, that uh, with ma uh, with edema and mass effect and uh, this is uh, in flare will cause uh, uh, it is yani uh, uh, hyper in, in flare hyper intense uh, lesion in the flare. This is a, a case of toxoplasmosis. And also we have herpes simplex encephalitis. The herpes simplex encephalitis, like in this case, it is 39 years old woman who presented with headache. Uh, the nun has... Uh, 93. I said 39? No, it's 93. 93 years old. Uh, presented with, uh, with the headache. And uh, the axial uh, non-enhanced CT scan will show subtle hypoattenuation in the right uh, uh, anterior medial area of temporal bone. Lobe. Yeah. Temporal lobe. Lobe. So, <laughs> and the flare will show enhancement corresponding uh, uh, to hyperintensity, sorry, and flare. In the same area, this is hypointense in here, and here it is hyper. Uh, we have uh, something called Petrus epicytis. Petrus epicytis, it is the uh, uh, it is the middle ear infection, which is extend up to the petrous part of temporal bone. Uh, it will uh, co uh, it will cause a petrous epicytis, which is present uh, uh, present by uh, decreased aeration of the mastoid uh, and opacification of the right mastoid air cell uh, and the mastoid antra and the tympanic cavity uh, and uh, the uh, yani pneumonization will be decreased. This so is the extension of the infection from the petrous bone to the petrous uh, apex uh, to the intracranial uh, compound. Yeah. To the because, um, brain. Yeah. Extend uh, fluid. Uh, it will be uh, flu uh, it show fluid uh, signal intensity uh, and uh, in same uh, position. Yeah, it's, uh, in the same uh, direct. Yeah, it is directly extension of this infection to the intracranial uh, compartment and uh, to the brain. Uh, and also we have uh, something called a grand uh, gradnigo uh, syndrome, which is gradingo grad. Gradinigo syndrome, which is a triad, a triad of abducent nerve palsy, and uh, which is uh, which causing diplopia and uh, deep facial pain, which is involving the first and second division of trigeminal tri uh, nerve, and also acute otitis media. Uh, now we have uh, intracranial tumors. The intracranial tumors. Uh, the uh, a common symptoms of all the intracranial tumor is headache. Uh, around 47 to 100% of the intracranial tumors may present uh, with headache. And uh, we have uh, uh, the colloid cyst of the third ventricle. The colloid cyst is one of the benign lesions, intracranial lesion. It is a very, uh, it is a common around, uh, it's account around 1% of all intracranial tumors. And uh, it is present, may be present with the headache from 68 to 100 percent. Yani, um, yani all the patients with colloid, uh, uh, colloid cyst of third ventricle present with headache. And it is show that on T1, uh, it is hyper and it is variable on T2 according to the content of the uh, adductor flare. T1, 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 T
okay. It is ISO on T1, sorry. Uh, it is ISO on T1 uh, and the variable in T2 uh, according to the uh, content of the cyst. Uh, um, uh, because its content is a protein and uh, this uh, a colloid material, and uh, this is uh, maybe variable. And uh, on uh, on flare, it is hyper on flare, and uh, uh, post contrast it show uh, ring enhancement. It is also on a T1 variable in T2, uh, hyper in flare, and it is uh, it show ring enhancement on uh, post contrast. Hemorrhagic metastasis. We have uh, uh, some uh, tumors, which is uh, the high, uh, highly vascular tumors, will present uh, uh, by intracranial hemorrhage, uh, and uh, it will present uh, with headache. Uh, like uh, the uh, most common metastasis, um, uh, uh, hemorrhagic metastasis is from uh, thyroid, from uh, melanoma, from uh, renal, uh, and uh, from choriocarcinoma. These all present uh, uh, to, uh, metastasis to the brain by hemorrhagic uh, lesion, hemorrhagic metastasis. And also we have uh, from the primary uh, tumors, the glioblastoma, the high-grade glioma, also may be present with uh, hemorrhage. Short of the hemorrhagic metastasis. CTMR, choriothyroid, melanoma, renal. Renal, okay. CTMR. Okay. And, and now we will uh, go to uh, the uh, miscellaneous, uh, we have some miscellaneous uh, manifestation like uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. Uh, the idiopathic uh, intracranial hypertension, it is also uh, called, uh, co uh, called pseudotumor cerebri, which is uh, the uh, patient, will, uh, it has a diagnostic criteria. Uh, the patient uh, have mostly pap uh, present with papilledema, and present with headache uh, and papilledema. Well, uh, the papilledema is one of the major criteria to diagnose uh, this, uh, the high, uh, uh, it's idiopathic intracranial hypertension. And also the diagnostic criteria, apart from uh, papilledema, the patient, uh, the, it, uh, it is, the uh, imaging finding is, uh, uh, n there is no mass, no uh, 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 hydrocephalus, and uh, there is no any enhancement, any dural or, uh, or meningeal enhancement. And also in the clinical examination for the patient, uh, you have uh, nothing apart from, I mean, the neurological examination is also negative. Uh, apart from may, uh, sometimes abducent nerve, uh, abducent and, uh, and uh, the facial nerve may be uh, affected. Uh, apart from that, the, the neurological examination should be negative. And also, uh, this hyper, uh, it, from its name, it's idiopathic uh, intracranial hypertension. So the, we have a hypertension, uh, CSF high, uh, pre, uh, pressure. When you do puncture, uh, it is uh, hypertensive. I mean, more than 250 in uh, adult and 280 in children. Uh, and uh, also, uh, uh, the CSF examination after you do puncture, it is only the pressure is increased, but the cytology should be negative for any tumor, for any infection. This is the diagnostic criteria. And uh, sometimes we have, uh, we don't have this papilledema. And the, when, when we don't have papilledema, we should have uh, abducent nerve involved. And if it's not involved, you have to have uh, this uh, finding in uh, MR which is uh, empty cella sign. And uh, this, the globe will be, the posterior part uh, will be this uh, yeah, straightening of the posterior part uh, of the globe. And also this, the arrogant space around the uh, optic nerve will be tortuous and this, uh, this space uh, will be thickened. Thickened uh, with or without tortuosity of the course of the uh, optic nerve. Uh, and uh, as we say, ah, and uh, uh, sometimes we have uh, optic disc also uh, from uh, the papilledema. If we have papilledema, we will have optic disc this, uh, like protrusion in the optic disc. In this case, we, do, we don't have it. Uh, this is again the, uh, the, uh, the imaging finding, uh, which is the uh, tortuosity uh, and uh, the thickening of arachnoid space uh, around the optic nerve, empty cilia sign. Uh, and this is the empty cilia sign. Uh, and the, this is the straightening of uh, the posterior uh, part of the, uh, of the globe, uh, optic globe. 
And uh, we finish the hypertension, we have spontaneous intracranial hypotension. Uh, spontaneous intracranial hypotension, we have uh, uh, traumatic and non-traumatic type of this. Uh, the traumatic, it is uh, commonly after uh, lumbar puncture and uh, this uh, after trauma, we, uh, يعني, uh, we have on either it is air uh, going inside the, uh, this, the cavity, uh, the CSF, uh, on, or there is a leakage of the CSF into outside. That's why it will be decrease the pressure in the, inside uh, the CSF pressure and will cause this uh, appearance. Uh, uh, it will cause uh, this hypotension, which is uh, the, most, uh, the most important thing. It is a, a postural headache. It is a severe headache, postural. It is uh, mostly uh, at the daytime and when the patient stand up and it will be relieved when the uh, patient is recumbent and uh, lying flat and um, if it's from the lumbar puncture and uh, traumatic uh, traumatic cause it is uh, uh, it's a benign condition and relieved by itself uh, it is uh, uh, started uh, within one hour uh, usually after the procedure and it will be relieved within three days but the, if it's um, from uh, spontaneous type, it is insidious onset and it's lots more than uh, the traumatic one. And uh, the imaging finding of it, it will uh, show this uh, hemo, uh, this is the hyper uh, intensity uh, in the subdur uh, subdural area. Subdural effusion. Subdural effusion. Okay, and yeah. after contrast, you see. Uh, patchy enhancement of the meninges, uh, continuous enhancement. Patch, uh, yes, uh, okay. meningeal enhancement. We see this also in VP shunt with over shunting, serotracheal hypotension. Mm -hmm. enhancement. Edema fluid. With flare, this is fluid, all CSF. Why do you have suspension? Why do you have suspension? This is stagnation. stagnation. And for the diagnosis of uh, this uh, hypotension, intracerebral hypotension, we have uh, two uh, uh, things. Uh, one of them, mamillopontine distance, uh, which is normally, uh, this is the, uh, from the mammillary body to the pons. Uh, this area should be more than 5.5 uh, in normal patient. This is a normal patient. This is with hypotension. Uh, this is, uh, 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 in this case, it is normal, this distance. But in here, it is 3 mm, which is not, uh, which is not uh, normal. This distance will be decreased in uh, cere uh, cerebral, uh, idiopathic uh, cerebral hypotension. And also, uh, we can see here the gyri, how it's present, and here, in the case of hypotension, it will present like this, because of the edema. And uh, here, uh, we have uh, this angle, uh, which is this, uh, uh, this uh, 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 Ponto mesencephalic uh, angle, which is normally should be more than 50, uh, this angle more than 50. Uh, this is the normal angle. So this is the normal? Yes, this one is the normal and this is decreased. So this is the hypotension? Yes. It is obvious this uh, edematous brain and this is a normal brain and this is also the distance uh, it's, yeah, it's normal, normal, yeah, and the distance right. also decreased and this angle also decreased. Uh, now we come uh, to pituitary apoplexy. Pituitary apoplexy, it's a, a necrosis of the pituitary gland. And it is uh, also maybe, uh, maybe associated with uh, pregnancy and uh, preeclampsia and uh, this. And uh, it is most commonly uh, uh, occur in a hemorrhagic infarction of the macroadenoma, pituitary macroadenoma. And uh, will be uh, present uh, like this. Uh, this uh, um, non-homogeneous, this mass effect, uh, this uh, hemorrhagic uh, bleeding, bleeding in the pituitary, uh, the pituitary with extension. And Pitu extent. Extent, 
yes, uh, with extension and mass effect to the surrounding. And um, the most uh, the most important things in pituitary apoplexy, the patient when uh, present, it will uh, it is commonly present with ophthalmoplegia, uh, ophthalmoplegia and uh, uh, and uh, visual uh, defect because it's uh, uh, it's compression uh, compressing on the optic uh, nerve and optic chiasm. So uh, it is with the headache, it will uh, the patient uh, commonly have uh, visual manifestation, visual either visual uh, loss or visual uh, defect or or, uh, or eye pain, just eye pain. Uh, the last one is carbon monoxide poisoning. The carbon monoxide poisoning, it is most commonly seen in our locality because this uh, the SOPA, uh, and uh, it is uh, present uh, in uh, this uh, globus pilidus bilateral symmetrical uh, enhancement. Uh, this uh, hyper uh, in T1 and also uh, it's present here also. Uh, it is uh, the most common site is this globus pilidus. Good. Now, usually we see this in winter. Yeah, in winter, in, uh, when uh, the CO uh, poisoning uh, in a closed space when you... And you see it in clusters, <laughs> like a family. Yeah, yeah. It, it is and in the... And you go home. home. And headache and confusion, the symptoms are headache and confusion. But the imaging finding is the most... Uh, and most commonly, it is uh, bilateral, symmetrical, and it is uh, in this area, the globus pilidus. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank thank you. you Extremely nice and beautiful and very, very, very...